Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. He's the head of the church. And he's the same yesterday. He's the same today. And he's the same forevermore. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I love Jesus more than I've ever loved him. I didn't really love him when I first got saved. I got born again because I didn't want to go to hell. But the more I learned, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. And so the more I learned about Jesus, my love for him increased more and more and more. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We want to welcome all of you that are tuning in on Facebook Live. And uh, this is Anthony Schroeder Ministries located here in Mobile, Alabama. We're coming to you live right from our studio chapel. And uh, God has uh, brought us to this place to minister his word publicly. I thank God for all of my uh, faithful uh, congregation here. I think I have one of the best congregations in the world. Amen. But we're called to carry the gospel around the world, and you are part of the world. And we are glad you tuned in, and just go ahead and share this on your Facebook page. And anybody that you know of that are in need of healing, or need what we call a touch from God, then you share this on your page or call a friend and tell them to tune in and hear and be healed. Amen? Amen. Now, we, we've been calling these Sunday night healing services, but actually they're not Sunday night healing services. They're actually Sunday night healing school. Amen. It's a school of healing, a school of learning. Amen. Many years ago, the Lord put it on my heart to start a healing school. Now, we're going to be ministering healing here every Sunday night, every Sunday night. We're going to come to you live every Sunday night. Now, we're on Facebook Live tonight, but we're going to be starting next week. You can catch this on our website page. Tonight is Facebook Live only, but next week you can go to anthonystrauter.com and you can watch it from our webpage. Amen? Amen. Uh, we're going to be receiving an offering here at the end of the service. But I want to invite you that are watching, you that are tuned in, you can be a part of this service through your giving. Amen. Amen. Giving is a part of our worship. Giving is God's way of financing the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it blesses you as well as the ministry that you're giving in. Our ministry primarily is ran by partners. We thank God for our uh, people here that give tithes and offerings that help keep the, the overhead of the building going. But we have more income coming into this ministry from without than we do from within because we're called to you. And so we thank God for all of our partners out there who partnered with us and, and send your monthly offerings. You don't know how much that means to us. We love you, we pray for you, we appreciate you. You are making it happen, amen. And if you're watching tonight and you're not a partner, go to our website and consider becoming a partner of this ministry to spread the word of God around the world. Now we're gonna be doing this here, but God has called us to television. Television is our goal, we're gonna start here and we're going to use every available voice that we can. Amen. Amen. And we're going to get the gospel around the world. The good news, the good news of the love and the message of Jesus Christ. That's what we want to share around the world. We're not uh, in media to be seen, to be known, or to be popular. We're in media to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's what all of this is about. Amen. So. I want to invite you to be a part through your giving. Go to our website and where it says donate, you can donate to Anthony Strauder Ministries. And uh, also we have a text to give. Our text number is 
251-251-1080. I don't know if we'll have this on the screen as of yet, but it's 251-250-1080. Now, I want to say this before we get in the Word of God. We are, we are not done. There's plenty more we need to do here. Um, we need to, to get lighting. If you're watching, you probably can see shadows behind me. That's because we need our studio lighting. We have the uh, hardware in place, but we have to get the lights. And the lighting is $15,000 for high definition, professional LED lighting. Amen, and that's minimum cost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And also, we're going to be purchasing our own television cameras. Now, we have uh, Robin Vethel here tonight and his film crew. They're filming these messages for us, and we thank God for him. He's, he's been such a blessing. Robin, you've been such a blessing to this ministry. Amen. Amen. Brother Robin worked for Brother Copeland for years, and uh, he came to one of our Sunday night services and said the Lord put it on his heart to help us in media and whatever it is we're called to do. And so here he is on Sunday nights filming this for us. And, uh, but we're believing God to purchase our own equipment. Hallelujah. Amen. We're believing God for $50,000. Amen. 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 And we released our faith. Yes. And faith without works is dead. Amen. Amen. You Amen. give toward it. God puts it on your heart to do anything for this ministry. Well, you just obey the Spirit of God, and He'll bless you accordingly. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm ready to get into the Word of God tonight. Are you ready? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me, please. <clears throat> Dear Father, we thank you tonight in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the privilege to rally around the Word of God, for the great freedom of this country, the United States of America, to come together under the blood-stained banner of the Lord Jesus and to express our religious freedom. We thank you for that privilege in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ and all that he did for us through the great plan of redemption we give you praise and honor and glory for him. Thank you for Jesus. For he died for our offenses, but Lord, he was raised for our justification. And I thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for his great life of obedience and all points tempted as we were, yet without sin. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. But Father, before Jesus left this earth, he prayed in John's Gospel, the 14th chapter, the 16th verse, and I'll pray to Father and he'll give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither know him, but you promise us that we would know him, for he dwells with us, and shall be, and is in us. So we thank you for the mighty and dwelling spirit that abides within us. We trust him tonight to speak through my lips. Give me utterance in the Holy Ghost. Unveil and unfold the scripture. I pray for the audience hearing tonight that you would give them eyes that may see, that you would give them ears that may hear, and that they would have a heart that shall be of a quick understanding, and every heart shall be blessed and strengthened and edified and established and built up in the things that pertain unto the kingdom of God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, for that we're so careful to give you all the praise, sir. We give you all the honor and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Well, if you have your Bible tonight, open them with me, please, <clears throat> to uh, the book of Acts. The book of Acts. Acts <clears throat> chapter 10 and verse 38. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. We'll start there, and you know these are these are healing school. This is a healing school, so we're gonna just bounce off of these scriptures, and 
And we're going to follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. Amen. There's a lot of things to know about divine healing. Uh, I, I'm convinced that the church doesn't know enough about it. There's not enough said about it. There's not enough teaching about it. And uh, there's a lot of sick people in the world. But God has provided the answer for all problems in his word. Can you say amen? Amen. So in the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Peter is preaching down at Cornelius' house to Cornelius of the Italian band, the Gentiles. And so during his message in the 38th verse, he concluded and said, how God, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Now here lie in this verse, great revelations, great understanding, great revelations in this verse. There's so many truths to be abstracted from this one verse. You know, the first thing that stands out is that God, God is mentioned first. How God anointed Jesus. God anointed Jesus. Say that. Say, God, God anointed, anointed Jesus. Jesus. Now, what did he anoint Jesus with? Well, he anointed him with the Holy Ghost. Yes. You see, the whole Trinity is revealed in this verse. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. They're all in unity in this verse. Can you say amen? amen? You know, there's a verse in the Bible in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, that says there are three that bear record in heaven. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. They are in unity. They coexist together. They in, are in harmony. And here you see the whole Godhead listed in this one verse. God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost <clears throat> and with power. Amen. Amen. Who anointed Jesus? God. I said who anointed Jesus? God. God. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Well, now what did he anoint Jesus for? Well, the rest of the verse says he anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power for the purpose of what he was doing and performing. It says he went about doing good. Doing good. Everybody say doing good. Doing good. Jesus went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil. You see, here lie in this verse the will of God. The will of God is revealed in multiple ways in this verse. You see, health and wealth, or wealth and health, is the desire of every human being. Everybody alive on this planet is seeking two things, that's health and that's wealth. Can you agree with that? Amen. 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 I mean, every commercial is about a better life. Every commercial is about uh, a, a better life, uh, doing it better. Uh, more money, living the great American dream, success, or if it's not that, it's some kind of drug commercial or some kind of uh, exercise or health commercial. Now, how come? Everybody in their right minds want better health and they want more wealth. Amen. It is the will of God for all of his children to experience health and to have wealth. And it's right here in that verse. I said it's right here in that verse. Well, we wouldn't have to uh, be too bright to know and to see the healing part in this verse because it says he went about doing good healing all. But you see, right there, the doing good, the doing good, it never tells you what the doing good was. It said Jesus was doing good. Well, if you study the, the words, uh, uh, etymology, the study and the origin of, of words, uh, the New Testament was written in Greek. Well, in the Greek text, and I learned this from Rick Renner. He's a Greek scholar. 
He said that the Greek word doing good was the same words used in secular Greek writings to define the philanthropist. Someone who was very rich and going about to, dis to distribute, to, to char charitably give goods, money, clothing, food, and so on and so forth. Is the word that they use for a wealthy man who went around doing good things. Amen. 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 And so you see right here in that verse, it puts do, doing good first. Doing good and. Doing good and. Doing good and. Doing good and healing all. Amen. And so the doing good was, was going around uh, lavishly bestowing goods upon people. You know, we do know the, the account where Jesus uh, fed the 5,000 with the two fish and the five loaves. You know, he, that's doing good. Feeding hungry people, that's hungry. That's doing good, isn't it? He blessed the children and laid hands on them. That's doing good, isn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. So it says in this verse that Jesus went around. He was anointed of the Holy Ghost to bring prosperity and to bring healing and to bring blessing. Now, I don't know how come everybody gets mad about these two, these two truths. You know, when you start preaching healing or prosperity, the, uh, the public and the, the whole public and the news media and the press, everybody gets mad. But you see, it's, it's all in God's word. It is the will of God for you to have health and wealth. Can you say amen? amen. And incidentally, he put the wealth before he put the health. Can you say amen? Now, I want to quote another verse of scripture to you. You can turn in your Bible to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. You know, the 13th verse says, After the devil had ended all of his temptations, he departed from Jesus for a season. Amen. And then Jesus returned from the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. And there, and he, there went a fame of him throughout all the regions round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And then he returned to his own hometown, Nazareth, and entered into the synagogue as his custom was and stood up for the reed. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written of him, the spirit. Now notice the order. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now how come? For God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The poor first. Amen. I said, notice he put the poor first. Amen. I said, notice he put the poor first. Amen. To preach the gospel to the poor. And, and, and sent me to heal the brokenhearted. In that order, to preach the gospel to the poor and sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. Amen. To preach the deliverance to the captive, to preach recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and then to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book, gave again to the minister, and set out, and all the eyes of the synagogues was fastened upon him. And he said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ear. Can you say amen? amen. And so what the point I wanted to make is that Jesus went around. He was anointed of the Holy Ghost by the Father. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost was ministering with Jesus at the same time doing the will of God. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I do nothing till I hear and see my Father do it first. Yes. And then so the Holy Ghost was the power, the might, the spirit, the anointing upon him yes. to carry out the work. Amen. amen. Can you say amen? amen? Now, and so in this verse, uh, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says, he went around doing good and healing how many? How many? All. All. Now listen to me. It is the will of God to heal everybody of anything, everywhere, all the time. Yeah. Now that's how you preach healing. You preach it from that standpoint. It is the will of God to heal everybody, everywhere, of anything, all the time. Are you listening to me? I said it is the will of God to heal everybody of anything, everywhere, all the time. Yes. That's the will of God. Now, I didn't say everybody got healed of everything, everywhere, all the time. I said it is the will of God to heal everybody of everything, anywhere, and at every time. Amen. Amen. You see, the will of God very often doesn't get done or carried out in the earth. Now, that's an overall will that uh, we can read the back of the book, it's going to end up going in the direction he already foretold. But you see, concerning mankind, the will of God is not always carried out in our life. 
If it was, you would be in a different place. If it was, perhaps you may be here sitting in this service. We don't go everywhere God wants us to go. We don't do everything God wants us to do. Amen? Amen. So the will of God is not always wrought in the earth. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter chapter 3, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it says that God's will is that none perish, but that all come into the knowledge of the truth of coming to repentance. So it's the will of God that everybody gets saved. I said, isn't it? I said, isn't it? Amen. Amen. You see, the mom said, Jesus died for the whole world. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Jesus died for the whole world. It is the will of God that everybody in the world get born again. It is the will of God that everybody anywhere at any time get saved. Amen. 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 You see, Jesus said, go ye therefore into all the world. Amen. And preach the gospel to every creature, all and every, all and every, everybody, anywhere, all people. Amen. Amen. Preach the gospel to them. Hallelujah. So in this verse, you can find the will of God. Now notice it said he was healing all. It's God's will to heal all the time. God doesn't want you sick of anything. God doesn't want, God doesn't want you sick. Bearing the burden of any sickness. God doesn't want you with high blood pressure, low blood pressure. God, God doesn't want us with arthritis. God, God doesn't want, see, too many Christians. Now, I'm going to address Christians and I'm going to talk to the world. But too many Christians, we put up with That's symptoms right. and problems. Right. Come on. And Jesus died so that we could be well. Amen. Jesus died so we wouldn't have to be sick. Right. Are you listening to me? Amen. Because it said he went about doing good and healing all. Everybody say all. all. Now notice the all that he was healing. The Bible defines the all that he was healing. Notice it says all that was oppressed of the devil. All that was oppressed of the devil. He went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil. So according to this verse of scripture, sickness is satanic oppression. Yeah. You see, the devil is responsible for all sicknesses. Sickness does not come from God. God does not make anybody sick. God does not put sickness and disease on anybody. God doesn't put disease on you to try to teach you something. If God sent you the Holy Ghost to teach you. The Bible says the Holy Ghost is the teacher. He's sent to lead you. He's sent to guide you in all truth. God don't need sickness to teach you anything. Amen? I mean, if he gave you sickness to teach you something, quit going to the doctor and learn. Amen? If God's making you sick, why do we go to the doctor to seek and healing? Nobody wants to be sick. Nobody wants to have a headache. Nobody wants to have a hangnail. Nobody wants to have a corn on their toe. Nobody wants to hurt. Nobody wants to have a splinter. It's not, it's not even your will that you be sick much less God's will. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. Now, you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. You being evil, you would never inflict sickness upon any of your children to teach them anything. A loving parent would talk to, talk to their children and teach their children. You wouldn't say, now go over there and put your hand on that hot stove and get burned so uh, that'll teach you a lesson not to touch it. Well, no, you can just talk to them and tell them, about the stove and teach them what not to do. You wouldn't want them to get hurt to learn a lesson. You don't have to get hurt to learn anything. Now you will learn something if you do get hurt. What you'll learn is don't put your hand on that stove anymore. Amen. Praise God. But it says he went about doing good healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Now the word oppressed comes from two different Greek words. Uh, kata ponio. The word kata means down under. And then coupled with this other word, it means lordship over. So you compound those two words. Uh, the word oppress actually means those that were down under. It means, it means to exercise dominion over, to lord over or to control. So Jesus went about healing all that was down under the lordship or the dominion of Satan. Amen. 
You, you remember, and we just quoted that in Luke chapter 4. It said that he, God anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor and sent me, and sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And then he said to preach deliverance, 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 deliverance to the captive. Yes. And, and, and the recovery of sight to the blind. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. Amen. You see, God anointed him to do that. Well, if God was putting sickness on people, then Jesus is working contrary to God. <laughs> If God was making them sick and Jesus was healing them, then they're schizophrenia. They're working uh, uh, contrary to each other. Amen. Amen. Now, let's look at another verse in Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. <clears throat> Amen. And verse uh, 23. Matthew chapter 4. And verse 23. It says, And Jesus went about all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now notice what Jesus was doing. He went about all the cities of Galilee doing what? He was doing three things. Number one, he was teaching in their synagogues. Everybody say teaching. teaching. And then number two, he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And then number three, he was healing, now notice this, all manner all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Jesus went about doing good, healing all manner, everybody say all manner, all manner. of sicknesses and all manner of disease. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something that verse does not say. Notice that verse doesn't say he went around healing everybody. That verse says he went around healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. One translation said every kind of sickness and then every kind of disease. You see, there was no sickness present on the earth that he could not heal. Yes. Yes. I said there's no sickness. There was, there's no such thing in the mind of God as something being uncurable. It's only uncurable to man. Yeah. It's only in, uncurable to the limited ability of the knowledge of doctors and man. But God created the body. Yeah. Amen. God created the body. There was a man that didn't even have eyes in his eye sockets. Amen. In the book of John chapter 9. And Jesus spit on the ground. <laughs> made clay of the spittle. He took his holy spit. And interwoven it with mud, he made a mud patch and stuck that mud in his eye and said, Now you go wash in the pool of Siloam, then thou shalt come again seeing. Hallelujah. We believe that he put mud in his eyes and like he created the first man from the dust of the earth. He's the Lord of the creation. He created another eyeball and put that mud in his eye sockets and he went washed it with water and he came away seeing. Can you say amen? amen? There's no such thing as any disease being incurable or uncurable. No such thing. No such thing. See, Jesus went about healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Amen. Now, he could have healed everybody. It doesn't say he healed everybody. Oh, you listen to me. But everybody that came to him got healed. He was 100%. I said he was 100%. There is nobody that has ever came to Jesus in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John for healing that left without it. No person. Had there would have been one person in the Bible that did not receive their healing, the devil would have used that to ride your back and would have told you, now you see, you're just like that one person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But isn't it interesting that he went about all the cities and villages, everywhere he went, everybody that came to him got healed. Amen. He never sent nobody away saying, well, it must not be the will of God. Well, we're just going to pray and see what God will say. Well, maybe God is putting this on you to teach you something. He didn't say that one time. Amen. I said he didn't say that one time. Amen. God hates sickness. Amen. God hates sin. God hates sickness and disease. Amen. Amen. He hates it. 
God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all. Everybody say all. all. That was oppressed of the devil. Amen. Amen. Now go back up to uh, Matthew chapter 4 and look at the 24th verse. Matthew chapter 4 verse 24. It says, and his fame went throughout all Syria. So Jesus was famous. You get to preaching healing, it'll make you famous in, for two ways. Number one, sick people will follow you around everywhere you go. And then number two, the news media will follow you around everywhere you go. Amen. There's a group of people coming and believing. There's a group of people coming down. But you're going to become famous. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him. Now notice this. I said notice this. And they brought unto him how many sick people? All. How many? All. All. Are you sick this afternoon? Are you sick this evening? Are you watching this uh, 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 broadcast? I keep calling it a broadcast because that's where we're going. Are you watching this broadcast? Are you, are you experiencing any kind of sickness, any kind of pain? You see, Jesus is alive today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He didn't get weaker over time. Can I tell you something? Actually, he's more powerful now than he was when he was in the earth. Can you say amen? amen? Because God raised him from the dead. Yes. And he said, all power has been given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. And he delegated that authority and that power to the church. Yes. He, he rose victoriously over death, over hell, and over the grave. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And so Jesus, his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people. Everybody say all sick people. All sick people. Now, if it wasn't the will of God to heal all sick people, boy, whoever did the picking was pretty sharp. Because there's nobody anywhere. See, the mom talked about, I'm going to read a scripture where it says, great multitudes followed him. You got a great multitude. Now, in the Bible, 5,000 is not a great multitude. You know, it talks about him feeding uh, the 4,000, and then it talks about him feeding the 5,000. But it never calls that a great multitude. In fact, that was an organizable thing. They made them to sit down in ranks and companies of 150 and, and, and 50. But you see, when the mom said great multitudes, a great multitude was bigger than 5,000. And out of this great multitude, everybody that came for healing out of this great multitude got healed. Amen. Amen. Well, if Jesus healed everybody that came, then Jesus will heal everybody the day that comes. Amen. But the only stipulation to those that came and were healed then is the same stipulation to you that come and that are healed today. And that's faith. Amen. Believing. Believe thou that I'm able to do this. Yea, Lord, we believe according to your faith. Then touch ye their eyes, saying according to their faith, so be it unto you. Amen. So they brought unto him all sick people. Now let's look at the categories of these sick people that were taken. Everybody say taken. Underline that word taken. Now notice it said that were taken with diverse diseases. Now I want to say something. Let me, let me say something about sickness. Let me say something about sickness. Now, now this may be a new thought to you, so pay very close attention. Sickness is a spiritual condition. Are mm -hmm. yeah. oh, you listening to me? Mm -hmm. There is a difference between sickness and disease. Yes. They brought unto him all sick people. And sickness is a spiritual condition that causes different diseases in the body in various forms. Some people were diseased in their hearing. Some people were diseased in their seeing. Some people were diseased in their talking. Some people were paralyzed and diseased in their walking. They had uh, a creeping paralysis. Some people were diseased in their blood. Some people were diseased in their lungs. See, a disease is, is a manifestation of sickness. And so wherever you are sick in the body, we give that sickness the name of diseased mm -hmm. because it brings disease to your body. And so this verse said they brought unto him all sick people 
that were taken with divers diseases. See, all of them were sick. Are oh, you listening to me? Yeah. See, if you went in the hospital and, and uh, you, you, you go up on a, you know, the, a certain floor where it's intensive care, and they got multiple rooms on this great hall, room after room after room, and everybody in the hospital is what? Everybody in the hospital is what? I said everybody in the hospital is what? Sick. But they're not all sick with the same thing. Some of them are diseased differently than others. But they all are sick, but they're, they're diseased various, in various forms, the various ways. Are you listening to me? Now, I brought that out because if sickness is a spiritual condition, then you have to get to the root of the spiritual cause. Are you listening to me? Amen. You see, I want you to recognize the connection between the devil and sickness. Well, the devil is a spirit. He's an evil spirit. He's a fallen angel. He was a cherub, Lucifer, the anointed cherub. And he has a, a, a conry of demons, spirits, different origin and ranks of demons that are sub under him, working with him. And he's the author of all sickness, and he's the author of all disease. We're going to get to that. Amen. Amen. So they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases. That's various different kinds of diseases. And torments. Now the word torment here means pain. Well, some people were tormented in the elbow. Some people were tormented in the back. Some people are tormented in the knees. Some people are tormented in the head, migraine headaches. Some people are tormented in the chest area, heart area. You see, he healed people with various diseases and torments and pains and those which were possessed with devils. Now, notice the spiritual connection here. I said, notice the spiritual connection here. Those that were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. And he healed them. Amen. amen. Can you say amen? amen? He healed them. He healed who? He healed all sick people of diverse diseases and pains and torments, and those that were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic. Now the word lunatic from the, from the Greek means moonstruck. But some translations, some modern translations translate that word lunatic to mean seizures. Seizures. Amen. You remember the boy in, uh, in Mark's Gospel, chapter 7, I believe? It said that when Jesus and his 12 disciples, well, his three Peter, James, and John, they had come down from the Mount of Transfiguration. And these parents brought, uh, uh, they came to Jesus' disciples and, and begging them that they may cast the devil out of his son. They could not. And they came to Jesus and said, we brought our son to you to cast the devil out of him, but, they, but to the, your disciples, and they could not. And Jesus said, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And, and Jesus cast the devil out of him. And, and he said, how long has this been with him? And the parents said, from of a child. So he was a grown, he was a, a young man. For oftentimes they cast him into the fire and into the water. You see that spirit was trying to uh, cause him to commit suicide or to kill him, to cause him to drown himself or to burn himself. And you look at that, most people call that a seizure. It has seizure, epileptic type of, of behavior there. Well, see, this word lunatic, it translated in some modern translations to mean uh, epileptic seizures. Well, Jesus went around healing people that had epileptic seizures Amen. and any pain. Amen. Amen. I said Jesus went around healing people with pains. Amen. I said Jesus went around healing people with pains. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember I had a, a service one Tuesday night in, uh, in uh, Monroe, Louisiana, and uh, I had some different guests would come on Tuesday night. And uh, this lady come up for prayer after, uh, after the message. And uh, I didn't know who she was, never seen her before in my life. I noticed she was sitting by this gentleman. I said, that gentleman you said by, that's your husband? Yeah, that's my husband. I said, well, have him uh, come up and stand with you. And he come up and sit with her. And I asked her what was her request, what was her need. She said, I'm having pain. Oh, I've been having chronic pain all over. We laid hands on her in the name of Jesus, cursed that pain, commanded the, to stop, cease being. And she was instantly, instantly healed. Mm -hmm. 
She was instantly healed of pain in the healing line. Well, now come to find out that she was the wife of the leading pain doctor in that city, which had a two-story pain building where they, they treated people for chronic pain. Now, here she was married to the pain doctor. Amen. And the pain doctor couldn't get her healed, but Jesus got her healed. Amen. 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 So, you see, he went about healing people that had torments of pains. Are you listening to me? Now, so I want you to see the connection between the devil and sickness. Satan is the author of all sickness. He's the father of it. He's the author of it. He's behind it. Now, I'm not saying all sick people have demons. We're not implying that because if you read here, you can clearly see that. It differentiates. He went around healing people with various diseases. And then it says, and those that were possessed with devils. So some people had diseases that were not possessed with devils. Amen. But the devil is backing all sickness. He's the cause. He's the author of all sickness and all disease. Not God. Amen. Now, until you realize that, it's impossible to receive healing from God when you think God's putting disease on you. Why would you believe God to take something off of you that he put on you? Can you say amen? Amen. So let's look at some healings in the word of God under the ministry of Jesus. Go with me to, uh, well, let's, let's, uh, well, let's go over to Luke chapter 6. I want to I wanna start the Luke's gospel, the 6th chapter, and the 17th verse. Luke's gospel, the 6th chapter, and the 17th verse. And he, Jesus, when he had come down from the mountain with them in the company of his disciples, and a great multitude of people from all about of Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sodom, which came together to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. You see that? Amen. I say, you see that? Luke chapter 6, verse 17. Amen. It says, when he came down with them and stood in the plain with the company of his disciples. So he had come down off of that mountain from choosing his 12 disciples. And then he stood down in the plain. And then the Bible said there was a great multitude of people from all uh, out of Judea and Jerusalem. Now notice what it says. They came to hear. Everybody say hear. hear. They came to hear him and to be healed by him of their diseases. They came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Everybody say hear, hear. and be healed. be healed. You see, many people want to be healed, but they don't want to hear. I say many people want healing, but they don't want to hear. You see, the hearing or the healing is connected to the hearing. Amen. I say the hearing is connected to the hearing. The healing is connected to the hearing. Well, you get these H's going. Amen. Now, why did I say that sickness is spiritual? Because Jesus, your words are spiritual. Are you listening to me? I say, your words are spiritual. Jesus said in John's gospel, the sixth chapter, the 63rd verse, for the flesh profit is nothing, but it is the spirit that quickens or give life. For the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. They are spirit life. Words are spirit life. Words are the life of your spirit. Words come out of your spirit. Amen. And so Jesus went around and teaching the word of God and people could be healed by hearing words. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. I said people can be healed. They can, they can have a chronic disease. They can have a lump or a tumor or a growth. They can sit right out there. I was preaching in Tallulah, Louisiana and uh, for uh, Kent and Janie Fong Church and, and Janie Fong's mother, she had had several uh, operations in her uh, throat on her esophagus and, and different parts of her throat where her saliva glands wasn't working. And uh, she was sitting in one of my services and we were just preaching the word of God and while she was sitting there hearing, her saliva glands started producing saliva. She got healed by hearing. Amen. Are you listening to me? <clears throat> Amen. In the month of November, the year 2013, I held my last healing a seminar uh, in Monroe at the church that I pastored there. The Lord told me to have a healing meeting in the month of November. Amen. 
And he said, and this will be a new beginning for you. And he said, a stronger healing anointing will come on you during this time. And so I taught on the subject of healing, and uh, it, I felt a stronger anointing come on me. But from all standpoint, we had some healing. We had a, a m couple of miraculous healings, but uh, it, it just didn't look like much happened. But the anointing was stronger, but it didn't look like much happened. But I didn't know later people came to me and told me there was a lady sitting to my left. She had a chronic lung condition that had been going on for many years. She sat back, her husband came, and they sit together, and she, she had a chronic condition. I didn't know this during the service. They came to me later and said while she was sitting there in that service, just hearing. See, she never came up for prayer. We never laid hands on her. We never anointed her with oil. But she says, while you were preaching, while, while you were preaching, the power of God came on me and totally healed my chronic lung condition. Everybody say, hear, hear. And, be and be healed. See, you can be healed by what you hear. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Amen. Now, I'm going a little bit different route. I want you to go to uh, Acts chapter, uh, we're going to come back there, Spirit of God. I just took a turn here, and I got to follow it. Acts chapter 7, verse 14. Acts chapter 7, verse 14, talking about Baal, uh, Saul, uh, Paul, excuse me, Paul and Barnabas, or Saul and Barnabas. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 14, verse 7, And there they, that is Paul and Barnabas, preached the gospel. And there sat a certain man impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. And that same man heard Paul speaking, who Paul, steadfastly beholding the man, perceived that that man had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up right on thy feet, and he leaped and walked. Well, now here's a lifelong cripple. Here's a lifelong cripple who never had walk. My goodness, if you walk and you got a margin to stand on. Yeah. This guy never took a step a day in his life. He's a lifelong cripple. He never took a step a day in his life. And the same man heard Paul speaking. And Paul steadfastly beholding the man perceived that that man had faith to be healed. Where did he get faith to be healed from? From what he heard. There, what did he hear? He heard the gospel. There, they preached the gospel. Amen. Now, can you be healed in your church by what you hear? Preach from the pulpit? If you can, I'd, I'd go to another church. You should be able to be healed by hearing in your local congregation. Every pastor should be preaching and teaching something relative to healing. Because healing was not a pastime sideline issue with the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus spent one third of his ministry healing. He was teaching, he was preaching, and he was healing. He was teaching, he was preaching, and he was healing. Amen. Amen. And the teaching and the preaching had everything to do with the healing. Amen. If you didn't receive his teaching and his preaching, you didn't receive his healing. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And so... Uh, <clears throat> When, uh, where am I? Now, what verse am I on there? What verse am I on? Uh, Acts chapter 14, verse 7. So you see, this man got healed, didn't he? Yeah. He got healed by what he heard. Amen. Can you be healed by hearing the gospel? Yes. If it's the gospel. So Paul, of necessity, must have preached that Jesus bore our sicknesses and carried our disease in order for the man to have faith to be healed. Because if he only preached salvation, he wouldn't have faith to be healed. He would have faith to be saved. Amen. See, when you just preach salvation or being saved, you get faith to be saved. You preach the other side of the cross, you, you get faith to be healed. Can you say amen? amen? Now, I want to elaborate on this some more because I want to lay a foundation. Because I want to create an awareness of satanic powers. I want to create an awareness of the devil. I think most of the church have forgotten about the devil and demons. Some denominations don't even mention and talk much about the devil. We just use him as a cliche or name or click or something. Well, the devil this and the devil that. No, he's a, he is a, an enemy. He is a worthy adversary. He is a fallen angel and he hates you and he hates God and he's out to kill you. And I think we need to be more conscious of that. It's not just a little migraine headache. It's not just an ache in the knee. It's not just a pain here or a pain there. We should not be comfortable with any sickness 
living in our body. We should detest it. We should resist it. We should stand in faith against it. In fact, the Lord told me, he says, you should think about sickness the same way you think about sin. That's right. That's right. Now, if the church is involved in sin, if it's all right for you to live a sinful life, if it's all right for you to go clubbing and in bars and go gambling and drinking and cussing and carousing around, if, if it's all right for you to, to uh, be in, 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 in gossip or criticism to public officials, is it all right to you to agree with politicians that don't agree with God's word? The Bible says, stand not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor take the seat of the scornful. Amen. You see, to the degree that you hate sin should be the degree that sickness and disease is allowed to touch your body. Could be if we hate sin and resist sin and live holy, then sickness and disease, his ability would begin to lose his grip on our life. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. I said, are you listening to me? Jesus did heal a man and said, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Amen. So sin can open the door to Satan. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now let's look at some healings then. Let's look at some healings. Well, let me finish this. Go back to that verse of scripture. I was in Luke chapter 6, verse 17. I, I wasn't quite through there. Look at the 18 verse, Luke 6, uh, verse 18 says, And they that were vexed, see, 17 verse says, they came to hear him and to be healed. The 18 verse says, And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. Now, now notice the correlation between unclean spirits. Notice the, the connection between spirits. Notice all these verses have two things in it. The devil, demons, evil spirits, and sickness. He went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Amen. Amen. Jesus went about all the cities and villages round about teaching, preaching, and healing. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments and pains. And those that were lunatic and those that were possessed with the devil and those that had the palsy. And he healed them, that is them all. Amen. Notice the connection. Now look at the 18th verse, Luke 6, 18. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, they were healed. Notice it didn't say they that were vexed with unclean spirits were cast out. You see, the unclean spirits or the evil spirits has something to do with some of the sicknesses. I wonder what happened to all the devils Jesus cast out when he was in the earth. Did they go anywhere? Did they leave the earth? No. Are they still roaming about? Amen. You see, this atmosphere is hostile, Amen. is raging with demonic activity. If you could only open your spiritual eyes and see mm -hmm. the host of angels that's flooded in this room Amen. and see all the demonic activity down the road, at the gas station, at the hospitals, roaming the hospital halls, causing death, the demon spirits are still here. And they are the primary cause for all sicknesses. You can't medicate a demon out. No. You can medicate the symptoms, and the symptoms can, dis can, can get better, but you can't meditate, medicate a demon. The devil is still there. He's got, the symptoms are going to come back because sickness is a spiritual condition. Amen. Amen. Now let's look at, a, 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 let's finish this verse, verse 19. And a whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. Everybody say them all. Them all. Amen. Now go with me to Luke chapter 13, and let's just look at a few healings. We, we're not going to detail them, we're just going to look at a few healings. Luke's gospel, chapter 13. The will of God is revealed in these verses. Luke chapter 13 and verse 10. Luke chapter 13, verse 10. When you get it, say amen. amen. Luke 13, 10 says, And he, everybody got it? You got it? And he was what? Teaching. Teaching. You see, Jesus put teaching first. The teaching anointing 
was on Jesus and he put teaching first. Now listen to me. Teaching, we all like miracles. I like miracles. We all like to see miracles, don't we? We all like to see healings, don't we? We all like to see people be wonderful if people got up out of wheelchairs. It would be wonderful if people got up out of stretchers or got off of stretchers. It would be wonderful. But the teaching of God's word is more important and priority than the working of miracles and or the gift of healing. Amen. 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 I said amen. amen. God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, Thirdly, teachers, 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 teachers. After that, that is after teachers. After that, working of miracles, then gifts of healings. The ministry of the teacher to the church is more important to the church Amen. than working of miracles and or gifts of healings. Because you see, if you teach God's word right, you won't need a working of miracle and you won't need gifts of healing. You can get healed by hearing God's word. You can be healed by making adjustments in your life with God's word. Amen. Amen. They came to hear him and to be healed. Are you listening to me? Are you listening? The Lord Jesus said to me years ago. He talked to me about this in the, in the late 80s. He talked to me again about it in the 90s. He talked to me again about it uh, over the past the 21st century. He said, all Roberts in his ministry had more people healed through the laying on of hands. And he did. He laid hands on over a million people personally. Amen. Billy Graham has preached the gospel faith to faith to more people than any man ever alive in our generation. But all Roberts has laid hands on more people than any other evangelist alive in our generation. And most of his results were through the laying on of hands in the tent meeting. Are you listening to me? Now, that's because that's the way he got started. You know, he, was, uh, he had a tuberculosis. He was dying as a teenager. They put him in the back of a car or a truck and took him out to a tent meeting. I think it was Raymond T. Richard, some famous tent evangelist. And he went out there and he got healed. He got healed through the laying on of hands in a tent meeting. Now, God gave him a ministry of the laying on of hands in a tent. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Hallelujah. And so, uh, and then he said to me, Benny Hinn has more healings in his life and ministry through the anointing. Mm -hmm. Benny Hinn's healings are through the atmosphere. Yeah. That's why they sing for uh, an hour and a half and they would sing till the, the, the glory and the anointing would rise and rise and rise and fill the place. And then people start getting in. What's happening over here? What's happening over here? And they just start this break out in healing. Well, that's through the anointing. That's through the atmosphere. Amen. But Benny came to Norval Hayes and he said, Brother Norval, he said, uh, I get about 40% of the people that get healed in my services, they're writing back or calling the minister saying, I lost my healing. They got bona fide, they got a bona fide healing in that meeting. But then two months, three months, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, a month, two, three, four months out, they lose their healing. Why? Can you help me? Norval Hayes said, you better believe I can help you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, Benny, he said, where those people got healed, um, they didn't get healed on their own faith. They got healed on the faith of the atmosphere. They got healed on the faith of the crowd. You know, you get 10,000, 12,000, 15, 20,000 people singing at one time, and the anointing is rising, and the crowd is rising, the atmosphere is surcharged with power, amen, and you're at the point of, you know, just, just if happily you reach, boom, you can get it. But you see, if you go back to your church where they don't teach and preach healing, and you don't read the Bible, and you don't study and meditate on healing scriptures, and you don't understand your healing, uh, healing is a part of your, uh, the atonement, then the devil will come back and put that same sickness back on you. He'll come back with those same symptoms to get you to yield to it, to get you to start talking, well, I guess I got healed, but maybe I didn't. And then, boom, you got it back. But you see, they got healed through the anointing. Are you listening to me? Now, he said to me, Kenneth Hagin, he, most of his healings, were done through a tangible, everybody say tangible. Tangible, <clears throat> tangible means perceptible to the touch, capable of being touched. Yeah. See, Jesus appeared to him in the year 1950, amen, the month of September the 2nd, 1950, in a tent meeting in Rockwall, Texas. He appeared to him and said, come up here, come up here, come up to the throne of God. 
and he spoke to him about an hour and a half. And among other things, he said, kneel down before me. He knelt down before him. And he laid the tip of his fingers in the palms of both of his hands. They started burning like he's holding a coal of fire. And he says, I've called thee and have anointed thee and given unto this special anointing to minister to the sick. That's what he said to him. And he said, the anointing is in your hands, not in your head. I didn't tell you to lay your head on anybody. The anointing is in your hands, not in your feet. I didn't tell you to put your feet on anybody. And then he said, you have to tell the people that you saw me. Tell them that I appeared to you. Tell them that I laid the tip of my fingers in your hands. And they start burning. Yes. Tell them. He said, and when they will believe that, everybody say, believe that. Believe that. that is, believe that. I appear to you. That is believed that I laid the tip of my fingers in the palms of your hands. That is believed that the healing anointing is in your hands. When they will believe that, then that anointing, then that power, she called it power, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost in power. That's tangible healing power. You see, as many as touched him were made perfectly whole. See, that power, when they heard him preach, I'm anointed. When they heard him tell this story, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for God has anointed me to preach, then they would believe that then that power would flow from him into them and would drive out their condition of disease out of their body. Amen. So he said to me, Kenneth Hagin's, most of his healings lie in the area of the tangible healing anointing. Now he brought out these four men, number one, Oral Roberts, number two, Benny Hinn, and number three, Kenneth Hagin, or three men. And then last he said to me, he said, but you, not so with you. He says, most of your healings, I've given unto you a healing ministry. Well, if the Lord gives you anything, you have to receive it. Yeah. I, I just, see, I, yeah. <laughs> I just, when I, when I said that, a wave of anointing come on me. Amen. See, if God gives you anything, you have to receive it. Amen. I said, if he gives you anything, you have to receive it. And so I've given unto you a healing ministry. He said, but you will have more people healed in your ministry by hearing than any other method. Oh, you will have gifts of healing. There will be a showering, a sprinkling of gifts of healing from time to time. Or we'll, I will minister through your hands with a tangible healing anointing from time to time. I've had a tangible healing anointing that comes from time to time. But the primary, everybody say the primary. primary. The primary way by which people are to be healed under your ministry is from hearing. You can sit right out there where you are and you can hear and you can be healed. Amen. You can hear just like the man at Lystra who never had walked, never took a step a day in his life, but the same man heard Paul speaking who Paul steadfastly beholding that man perceived that he had faith to be healed. The faith to be healed came from what he heard. And so you can be healed tonight. You can be healed right there in your living room. You can be healed of any disease that you have by hearing this word. You see, there's no time nor distance in the spirit realm. The same anointing that is resting upon me, flowing out to you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and be healed. Rise up and receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Rise up and take your healing. Say, it's mine. I got it. And I take it now. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. Amen. 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 So he said, Most of your healings will come through hearing. Most of your healings will come through hearing. You see, there's no way you could just lay hands on a thousand people, sometimes two thousand people. But if they're all in proximity of your voice, they all could be healed at one time by hearing. Massive healings by hearing. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith comes by hearing. Amen. And hearing by God's word. Amen. Amen. Now, let's look at Luke 13. I'm going to turn my thoughts here. I got off track. But I want to turn my thoughts. Luke chapter 13, verse 10 and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit, now notice this, that had a spirit of infirmity. Or we would say she had a spirit of sickness. This was some kind of deformity. Eighteen years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. 
Now notice this, and he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Immediately she was made straight. Now, the point I want to make is that uh, she had a spirit. There was a spirit backing the condition that was causing this condition. She had a spirit of infirmity. Now, I, I saw somebody in, in this condition. I, I worked in a drugstore for 16 years a month and a week. And I remember one day I, I was at the back of the drugstore and, and a gentleman came in and, and he was bowed together just like in coverage. He was just, just like this, just folded over sort of like a pretzel. He just folded over. He come through the door. I, I saw it. My first thought was he lost something. I leaned down to see could I help him find. I leaned down to see could I look around, help him find whatever it was he lost. And I realized, no, he's in that condition. And he walked, he just come right, he walked straight in. He walked straight in like this, bowed together, and could in no wise lift himself up. And I began to suffer with him. I began to have compassion on him. And he, 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 his, his, the curvature of the spine, he just folded up and folded up and died that way. They had to stretch him out to put it. In fact, he was an undertaker, a mortician. But he died that way. Well, this lady is in that same condition. She was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself up. And Jesus was teaching, just like I'm teaching. And evidently, he saw this lady coming to the synagogue. She's coming to the synagogue. This lady had been coming to church, but she's still not healed. This lady had been coming to church, but she's still not healed. This lady, God doesn't want you to keep coming to church and not be healed. Church is a place to receive healing. Amen. I said church is a place to receive healing. He laid his hands on her and said, Thou art loose. Now, I want you to pay attention to something he said. Of course, the Pharisees were mad about it because he healed on the Sabbath day. Now, look at the uh, 18 verse, the 18 verse, 16 verse. Well, let's look at the, uh, well, the 15 verse. And the Lord, <coughs> and the Lord then answered him and said, I said, thy, and said, Thou hypocrite, don't, don't you, uh, well, let me see. He said, does not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead them away to watering? And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham? Now notice what he said, whom Satan had bound. Whom Satan had bound. Whom Satan had bound. Lo, these 18 years to be loose from her infirmity or, or condition. Jesus said some very emphatic truths about this lady. Number one, he said she ought to be loose. Amen. You know, if Jesus walked into church today, he would walk into church and he would look and he'd say, you, you, you ought to be. Yes. You ought to be. In other words, you should be healed. You should be loose. You should be loose. Yes. You should be loose. Now, how come? Seeing she's a daughter of Abraham. Yes. She was a Jew. She was a child of the covenant. And the covenant dictated that you could walk in health and walk in prosperity, walk in victory, and be healed. Amen. Now, how does that affect us today? Well, Galatians 3 says that if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed, and you are an heir according to this same promise. Well, if Jesus said this lady ought to be loose because she's a daughter of Abraham, then you ought to be loose because you're a daughter of Abraham, and I ought to be loose because I'm a son of Abraham. Amen. 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 And then number three, he said Satan had bound her. Yes. He didn't say God made this woman sick. Amen. He didn't say God put this disease on this woman. He said, the Bible says she had a spirit of infirmity, and Jesus said Satan had bound this woman. Yes. Was Jesus right or was he wrong? Was Jesus telling the truth or was he lying? Is Jesus confused? Is the devil a figment, a, a figment of his imagination? No. No, the devil is a real devil. Yes. He's a real devil. Yes. And Jesus was ministering in the spirit, and he dealt with the spirit behind the condition. He laid his hands on her, and the anointing from his hands went into her and drove out that, that devil, drove out that disease out of her body, and she was made straight, and she glorified God. Yes. I said she glorified God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Look in Mark chapter 9, verse 14 through 29. I mentioned this earlier about the, the epileptic son. 
when they brought the son to Jesus because his disciples could not cast him out. I mentioned that early. Mark chapter 9. We just want to get the, uh, the climax of the verse. Mark chapter 9 and verse 25. Mark chapter 9, verse 25. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 9 and verse 25. You all got it? And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him up, and he arose. You see... The man that was having some sort of epileptic seizures, he was dumb and deaf. Jesus said the deafness and the dumbness of this man's life was caused by a spirit. It was a devil. He cast the devil out, and the man could hear, and the man could speak, and the seizures stopped. I mean, do the math. He cast the devil out, the man could hear, the man could speak, and the man could talk, and the man had a normal life but he cast the devil out of him. Amen? Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. The two blind men. Matthew chapter 12. These men were blind and dumb. Now these men were blind. They could not see and they could not speak. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 22. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 22. Everybody got it? Matthew 12 and the 22nd verse. It says, Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb. Well, every devil I know is blind and dumb. Amen. And he healed him insomuch that the blind and the dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? Well, he cast the devil out of a man who couldn't see and a man that couldn't talk. And the man could see, and the man could talk. What caused the problem? The devil. the devil. He went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Amen. Amen. And then we read Matthew 4, 23 and 24. They brought unto him all sick people that were taken. That were taken. That were taken. That were taken with diverse diseases. The word taken means they were holden or compressed as a prisoner in prison. They were compressed, the, it implies that they were compressed about their ears because of a crown or a surge. Now let me tell you what that means, that you, can, you could have heard the wrong thing all of your life concerning healing, and because of the wrong teaching you have heard, you are under the influence and under the control of the enemy. Yes. You're taken captive by the words of the people. The devil has compressed your ears to hear. He actually, he put his hands over your ears so you can't hear the gospel. Yes. And he's speaking lies to you. Yes, right. And those lies go inside of you and create an image mm -hmm. and makes it very difficult for you to be healed. Yes. And that's why Jesus preached deliverance to the captive. He preached deliverance to the captive. He preached recovery of sight to the blind. Now that doesn't mean he healed the blind. Oh, he healed the blind. We see that through the scripture. But the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, if our gospel be hidden, it is hidden to them that are lost in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Anybody that doesn't believe any portion or part of the gospel, you've been blinded by the enemy in that part. If you don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speaking with other tongues, then the devil has succeeded with blinding your ears on that part of the gospel. If you don't believe that Jesus still heals today and healing belongs to you, the devil has blinded your minds from believing that part of the gospel. Yeah. 
He's trying to keep the word from you so you won't believe. Amen. Amen. And so sickness is a spiritual condition. Amen. Amen. Sickness is a result of Adam's sin in the garden. Now, I want to just try to kind of close with this. I want to just sum this up. It's always the will of God to heal everybody. It's always. It's always the will of God. And if you preach it from that, I didn't say everybody got healed. Everybody could be healed, but I didn't say everybody got healed. Everybody didn't get healed in Jesus' ministry, but everybody that came to him got healed. And I'm telling you that if you would come to the Lord and take him at his word, you can receive your healing just like everybody. Listen, we got a track record in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and in the book of Acts. Everybody that came to Jesus and the apostles got healed. Let's look at a few verses in Acts, and we'll close with this. Before we go to Acts, we're right here in Matthew. Turn to Matthew chapter 10. I want to bring this out. Because we're talking about the cause of sickness. Sickness is satanic oppression. Matthew chapter 10 says, And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples... <clears throat> He gave them power against unclean spirits. Now, notice the correlation between spirit and healing. He gave them power against unclean spirits to do what? To cast them out and, 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 and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of what? Disease. He gave them power. Now listen, I meditate on these verses all the time. Before I go to a service where I'm going to be ministering healing, I'll go and I'll read these verses and I'll, <clears throat> I'll meditate. I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you have given me authority over all unclean spirits. We have authority over devils. Amen. 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 I said, we have authority over devils because the devil is behind all sicknesses. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you stump your toe. God doesn't want you to stump your toe. He's given his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways lest you dash your foot against the stone. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. So we, we need to be conscious and get back to the New Testament ministry of casting out devils and healing the sick. Now notice he said he gave them authority over all unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. He gave them authority. Now look at the seventh verse. Look at the seventh verse. Well, it says, and they, and as you go preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, <clears throat> and freely give. God has set the church against all sicknesses and all diseases. Amen. Now it's time for the church, it's time for us to rise up and take our position where this is concerned. It's time for us to quit putting up with sickness and disease. Amen. Don't take it as I'm just getting older. Yes. No, 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 no. You don't have to, you don't have to receive that. Right. You don't have to say, well, I guess I'm getting older and this, this is the stuff that happens to you when you get old. No, 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 no. Right. Hallelujah. I, I'm fighting that in the name of Jesus. I, I'm, I'm fighting it. I'm standing against it. In the book of Job 5.26, it says, Thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age, like as a, like as a rack of corn, amen, coming into a season. Amen. You can go to your grave full age with no sickness and no disease. You don't have to get sick to die. You can just go home to be with, be with the Lord. Amen. amen. Listen to some other translations. It says, you shall come to your grave with strength undiminished. The New English Bible says, you shall approach the grave in full vigor. The Rotherham translation says, you shall come yet with robust to the grave in a ripe old age. The Taylor translation says, you shall live a long and good life 
in st like standing grain. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 With long life will I satisfy you Amen. and show you my deliverance. I'm going to show you ways. He didn't say you wouldn't get attacked. He didn't say you wouldn't have symptoms. He didn't say you wouldn't have problems. But blessed be God, we can overcome. Yeah. Amen. We can overcome through the name. Now, I want to say this. I'm going to close with this. The Lord put it on my heart to hold a seminar, and the next seminar we're going to hold is going to be on the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus seminar. Because we got to get back to a reverence and understanding the name. Yeah. Jesus said, Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then he said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. Comma, a semicolon. They put the punctuation in the wrong place. Yes, yes. 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 Punctuation is not inspired by God. The word is. Yes. Now that verse really should read, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. That's right. Amen. That's right. Well, what sign? Well, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall cast out devils. They shall uh, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yes. Yes. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall take up serpents. That doesn't mean handling snakes. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I was in the, out in the yard working the other day, a couple of weeks ago, and, and I'm, a, I'm an outside boy from a small town. I've been bit by everything you can be bit by except a rattlesnake or snake. And uh, you don't get upset when you're bit, you know, you just keep it going. Well, I, I got bit by something, and I realized that this bite was not a normal bite. I felt it when it, it, I felt it claw down on me, and then it bit me again and again. Well, I didn't pay any attention to it. I couldn't find what bit me. I, I believed it was a spider. And the next morning, I had a big knot on my leg with two red, uh, with two red spots on my leg, a big knot on my leg, and it was just swollen. And then a fever blister came up, and, and I, I knew I had been bitten by a spider, perhaps. It wasn't an ant or a waltz or a bee. <laughs> Well, anyway, the first thing that I did, I opened the Bible up, went to Acts chapter 27 when Paul was on that island building a fire, and he was gathering sticks to make a fire, and a poisonous viper jumped out and bit him on the hand, and the Bible says he, he shook it off of him and kept making the fire. And when the natives saw him, the Bible said they looked at him, and when he should have swollen and fallen to the earth, he didn't. Then they started to worship him and, as a god. Amen. So I just claimed that. And I say, Father, in Matthew chapter 16, you said, if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. You said you could take up serpents. Well, if you can take up a serpent, that would cover a spider bite too. Amen. Amen. If, if any deadly thing you drink don't hurt you, then any deadly thing that bites you don't hurt That's you. Right. Amen. 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 Because we've got to learn to use our authority Amen. in God's word in the name of yes. Jesus yes. and quit putting up with headaches and knee aches and elbow aches and stomach aches. We're not just talking about uh, healing crippled people or lame people or blind people. Now, we need to do that. We need to have that working. But we don't want to heal the crippled, the lame, and the blind people, and then we be sitting out in the audience sick. That's right. Amen. I don't want to be sick. Amen. I hate sickness and disease. I hate headaches. I don't have headaches. I hate headaches. I hate sickness. I hate pain. Anybody like pain? No. no. Jesus healed anybody that had any pain. Amen. Amen. And so I'm going to pray for you right now before we end this service. If you got any pain in your body, if you got any condition in your body, now I want to pray for. Uh, there was a lady that uh, I won't give your name uh, over online, but you're from London, England, and you were in a church that I preached at over there, and you called in about prayer uh, for. I think it was your your uh, father or husband with Alzheimer's disease. And I want to pray because I promised her that I would. I want to pray for that person and I want to pray for you. So if you're watching 
uh, I want you to lay your hands on that part of your body, whatever part of your body, your chest. If you're having chest problems, put your hand on your chest. If you're having mind problems, put your, uh, your hand on your head. If you're having elbow problems, put your hand there. Whatever is hurting you, if it's high blood pressure, just put your hand on your body. And I want to use the name of Jesus, and I want to curse that condition in your body and command. See, Jesus said, Behold, I give you authority over all unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. I have that authority. Amen. Now, how do you get it? Jesus gave it to me. Well, do you have it? Yes, he gave it to you. The authority is in that name. Now, I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody that's watching in Jesus' name. I pray that the power of God would move upon them by faith. Everybody that's believing, I pray that you receive your healing now in the name of Jesus. I take authority over all pain. I take authority over arthritis. I take authority over any back pain, knee pain, leg pain, elbow pain, foot pain, ankle pain. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing now. Rise up and say, it is mine. I take it. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for any disease, any disease in the name of Jesus, I take authority over that disease. And I command that you be healed. I command in Jesus' name that you receive your healing. Now rise up and take it. It's by faith. Everybody in the Bible took it by faith. You've heard the word. Sickness is of the devil. The devil's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life, and that you might have life more abundantly. He's come to give you abundant life. Being tied to a wheelchair, being paralyzed, being crippled, being on, if you, on oxygen tank, whatever it is, God wants you to be well. Amen. Praise God. Well, I believe you received your healing. Let us hear from you. Amen. If you're commenting on Facebook, we want to hear from you. Uh, you can go to our website, send us an email. You can inbox us on Messenger and give us your testimony. Send us an email. Call the office about your healing. Now, we're not there all the time, but if you leave us a message, we'll call you back. And we want to hear from you, and we want to know that you received your healing. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Now, if, you're, if you tuned in late and you picked up this about midpoint, uh, we want to encourage you, if you've been a part of this, if you like to give, go to our website, anthonystrada.com, go on to donate, and you can donate an offering if you so desire to support the work of God, or you can text to give, amen. Our text number is 251-250-1080, 251-250-1080. Amen. Praise God. Well, were you blessed tonight? Yeah. Amen. This is just the beginning. Yeah. This is just the beginning. We're going we're gonna to plow through every subject yeah. on God's Word. We're going to take our time. We're going we're gonna to take every healing account in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're going to take 25 accounts of healing and preach them. Yeah. We're going to preach every aspect of healing and we're going to take our time and do it. We got till Jesus comes. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, God bless you. Amen. I'm signing off. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of the service. Thank you for giving. Amen. Donna, would you come and close the service and receive our offering here tonight? God bless you. In Jesus' name, be healed and keep your healing and give God all the honor and give God all the glory. Give them a hand clap in. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.